All right, here is video review for MP47 Masterpiece Hound. Although we say Masterpiece, because there's some issues. But anyway, um, you, you see him now, uh, he's his Jeep mode. Uh, he's looking a little different than we normally think of Hound because they put a lot of cost and plastic and, and packaging space into uh, this little removable hood so you can recreate that one time. Anyway, this is just friction held on. You can just kind of slide it off. It does store a lot of bits in there, bits that you don't need to store mo for, for, this, for the most part, like the key and the faces, I guess, are nice storage, but most of those are just going to stay in the box anyway. So uh, whatever, but there's all this stuff under here you can pull out. He's got his little Ravage cage key and his gas can. Oh, now you don't want to come off. Couldn't get it to stay in there a minute ago. Oh, well. But you'll be able to go ahead and get all, get all this stuff out. Because we're going to actually need this stuff. Well, maybe not so much the faces, but we'll get those out of there. Come on. There we go. Get that out of there. You can see there is a handle in there because he can hold it as a shield. And I'm not even... He can hold it as a shield. Just trust me on that one. He's in robot mode. Here, you know what? Here's the busted one that's not in... You can put this in his hand and he can hold it as a shield. Let's just pretend I did it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it because I've already started. Have it in. I'm going to half ass it. There we go. So yeah, you can, you can have this as a shield if you want. Whatever. Anyway, that's going to go off to the side. He's busted. Don't worry. You're broken. Anyway. It's muffin time, sir. Anyway. So the key and the faces, uh, if you're not storing them in the hood, set them off to the side for the time being. All the rest of this stuff will attach to his vehicle mode. You just plug this on. Right back here under this little panel, the wheel sits a little higher than I would expect it to here in the back, but it does plug on right there. And then extend the, the cannon here. And there is a little, it's a shaped notch. It only goes on one way here. You just plug this on right back here. And there's Hound in more of what we consider uh, traditional Hound vehicle mode. Uh, this piece, like I said, this you can see this gun can raise up and down. It can rotate here. It does like to come off that peg with, with anytime you rotate it because this is a little tight. So I uh, just make sure you, I mean, if you pose it, just make sure you'll either hold it down or push it back down when you're done. He does also come with um, a couple set of little replacement mirrors, I guess, if they break. And I love that that's the one they give you replacement parts for. But, um, haven't had it, and I'm not going to swap these out because I'm afraid they would break if I actually pulled them off of there. But just in case, you do get a couple of a separate set of mirrors. Got a cone for his hologram gun, which we'll show off later. And you also get a couple different spikes. Uh, a hologram spike uh, who can sit in his driver's seat and doesn't really bend or pose very well because he's just a solid piece. He's just a solid chunk. But he can sit there and get hologram spike, or you can pose um, the spike that comes with him with his freaky elbows. Um, doesn't fall apart as bad as the one that came with Optimus and Bumblebee. And he can he can drive Hound. Do do do. do. He can drive sit in the passenger seat, or if you want, you can take the one. You can pose him with the spike that uh, that came with Bumblebee and Optimus for kid mode. Because you can see the one that came with Bumblebee and Optimus is obviously these vehicle modes are not in proper humanoid scale because this one sits inside Bumblebee and can fit inside MP44. Uh, this one fits with Hound. So, um, yeah, a little bit more facial detail, although even he's actually got some sculpted face detail. Um, he's not as obviously, there's not this obvious gap in his torso. Um, there is a line there. Uh, his, like I said, he actually has elbows, but they're a little freaky. They're a little lower than where an elbow should normally sit. It's more like he's kind of cracking his forearm to move his hands. Um, it does have a, a swivel there at the the upper torso. Ball joint, hips, and knee, and then hinge knees. And uh, again, you could pull them apart if you wanted to, but is generally more stable uh, and less prone to just popping apart than the smaller one. Anyway, that's enough about Spike. Let's get to Hound. So we've already showed him in vehicle mode uh, with, with the gun and everything. Now, a lot of people are opening these things up and finding broken bits right out of the box. Um, 
And I and the one the previous one I had, this is the replacement. I did have a broken part. We'll get to that point during the trend. when we get to the robot mode. I'll show you where it, where it snapped in transformation. It was one. It was this hinge right here actually that did it. Um, but there's a lot of people reporting problem areas, and it seems like if you get a solid one that that doesn't really stress or crack right out of the box, you're probably good. But you, I mean, I'm still treating this one with kid gloves, despite the fact that he's gone through like four or five transformations now, because. Um, like this is painted transparent plastic and uh, it's just really scary. Um, and also the, the way the legs fold together, I can get it done without really scaring about the stress, but the legs on the previous one were actually kind of smooth and I thought I had avoided the problems. And then I, when I went to transform the upper body, it, it fell apart. But, um, but yeah, so your mileage may vary. Like Amazon apparently has them on sale for like half price. He's like 90 bucks right now. And uh, I mean, that's, that's a, I guess that's better if, if you get one and it's broken, that's better than paying $180 for it, but whatever. Whatever he's going for. I, like I said, I was looking at the end price. but So anyway, but here he is in vehicle mode. He rolls. You can kind of see the grooves in this wheel for how it transforms. But like I said, all this stuff doesn't have to stay on him. This this thing, this wheel, and this, you can leave it stored in that hood if you want to. That, that uh, fabric cover, even though it's plastic. Um... But he can transform with all this stuff attached, which I think is kind of neat. So we're going to do it that way. Um, you get his bio card in the packaging. A little sheet about, hey, here's some stuff that maybe requires a little bit more uh, clarification so you don't bust your figure here. Like there's a different, like here's, here's the right order to unfold this missile launcher and not this one. I don't know what exactly was catching because I didn't have any issues with it. But still, here's an extra step of here to make sure you lift up the seats before you pull out the panels because the original instructions don't really show you that. Um, or it's way too small. And then here's how to you make sure the arms clip up over this piece. So we'll, we'll show those in the transformation. But you get a little, you get a little errata for the instruction manual and the instruction manual itself. Now, on to the figure. Now, like I said, um, the seats, these, these panels are going to slide up to the side. And what you... But these panels, the, the, the lower, the front half of the seat, this actual seat part of the seat, not the seat back, is a separate piece from here and is actually attached to this, but it's plagued on quite securely to the body of the thing. So before you, and the instructions just say to pull this out. So before you tug and pull and possibly risk stressing or cracking any of these hinges, uh, get a tool that, uh, a solid tool, and kind of just pry, get in here and just kind of pry that seat up a little bit just to unpeg it from, from there. And that's gonna make pulling these out a whole lot easier. You see now it just kind of slides out easily. And you do wanna be careful here because like I said, these hinges right here, um, sometimes this hinge as well, uh, you will already see some stress marks or, uh, cracking shortly after opening upon a transformation. So you do, you don't want to treat these panels uh, with some care, but once you have that seat unplugged, it shouldn't be stressful. Uh, there shouldn't be a whole lot of force needed to just slide those out to the side here. And once that's done, you can take this whole front end and lift it up. And here you can see his shoulder cannon, uh, his head up in here, his forearms, um, most of the upper body, and then here's the lower half right here. So he, on the lower half, untab this, this little tab here on, on the wheel panel that holds this together, and you can fold those out. And fold these panels right here around, these little side panels here. Um, the first time you do that, it can be a little difficult uh, getting your fingernail under there, but usually once it, because some of the paint gets a little sticky, but I haven't had it on either one of my copies. It wasn't completely frozen. It just, the first time was a little bit rougher uh, getting those to turn. So split those open like this. Go ahead and fold this up. And I think turn it all the way around like this is how we're going to put that in. Yeah, to turn it so that like, once it's folded up, the laser can is still facing forward. These are going to fold down, and you'll see that pops out that. And then fold these down and around like this. And here's where it starts to get a little tricky. These panels right here come up and out from the leg. And you can see his little handgun stores right in there. Uh, and you can store it there in robot mode uh, on, on this panel here that pops out with the wheel. Now let's go ahead and take those out just because having these panels out makes all of this a little less scary and some of the friction of people cracking this hinge, uh, if you pull these out a little bit, it prevents this, these panels from colliding against each other. It just takes a little bit of stress off this hinge during transformation. So we'll go ahead and pop that piece off and then pop that piece off. Um, and these pieces, you take this handle and uh, lift up the rear end of it. 
Actually, it might help if you just plug this on first. You get you, get you a little bit of leverage. Uh, so plug this onto the front of the gun and then pull the, the rear handle up like that. And that's going to be a little hologram gun. Actually, let's go the other way. There we go. It can go on either way. It's squared off on the sides on that peg. It can go on either way, but I found one way sits a little better. But anyway, there's a little hologram gun. We'll set that off to the side. So you come down here. Now these wheels, uh, you can see, have the, these grooves in them because they're going to fold in half. And you want to take fold in one wheel first, get that folded in, and then the whole wheel can fold in to the leg like that. You can see it kind of squares up against there. And then you can, again, you want to be careful and not put too, too much pressure on the panels so you don't break it. But you can uh, wiggle this piece out and then collapse that other half of the tire in. And once that's done, uh, this panel comes down around like that. Like I said, if you have this panel just not quite pushed in, it won't hit this corner and you can kind of fold this down and around, get it into place, and then you kind of massage everything because this piece does have a peg that's gonna peg into this panel. So you gotta push that back in so this can peg in and then kind of push this in so that tab goes right into that slot and then snap it all together. And there you go. And if you're lucky, this hinge won't crack. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Nothing, nothing bad has happened yet, but this hinge right here is where a lot of people were seeing cracks uh, from folding this panel down. So if you do it right, you'll take some of the stress off of it. Then here, you've got to get this, this outer panel comes down on this hinge right here. It's a separate piece, and there's, you can see there's a hinge up here. You've got to bring this down um, the whole assembly kind of straightens out like that and then folds down and around. The wheel just popped off, but that's not the other world. So now it's straight and coming down like this. The wheel here does something very similar to the other ones in that uh, when it's pegged on, wait, is that the right way? No, it's, it was this way. Um, it also, you can see, folds in half and around like that which then folds up inside the foot like this. So bring, bring the, make sure the seat back stays all the way up. And then this whole panel, you leave the, th this inner hinge down and fold it at this hinge right here that's aligned with the bottom of the foot. And fold that panel up and around the wheel. And then around that, that should seal the foot. And then you fold this panel down. And then this little fake animated wheel kind of slides right into that slot should, should go all the way like that and locks that foot into place like that. And then you just bring it up on the hinge and bring that hinge down and forward. And that leg is transformed. We're gonna, well, not fully, we're gonna have to rotate this, but for the most part, uh, that's good and done. Make sure that's not straight, okay. And then over here, same thing on the wheel. I could do this a little faster, but I really don't wanna risk snapping it again. So I'm trying to be as careful as possible folding this all up. And again, pull that out just a smidge so this can come down without hitting anything stressfully. And then push that back in. Yeah, come on, there we go. And then plug that in and plug that in. Double check it, make sure nothing cracked. Oh crap, is that a crack? No, oh, that may have cracked right there. Can't tell. Um, can tell that's a crack or a paint rub. We'll look at it later. We're right there on the edge. If not, we've got we've got a panel on the other one, other one we can replace it with. Anyway, and then on the leg down here, uh, the foot down here, it's, it's the same thing. Bring this around, and actually, this should have this should have stayed on. This fell off because this piece. You've got this facing, yeah, it's forward. Um, you bring this down. Okay. It's, it's hard to do without this popping off. Like I said, this doesn't really stay on here. I guess you, you could conceivably glue this onto here, but um, that's up to you. But this whole hinge should hinge inside here, and then this should fold up into the, into the foot like that. Make sure this comes up and around. The uh, tank folds in and also rotates around like that so you can close the foot up 
around all of that and it can take a little bit of trial and error to get everything to line up right. You just close the foot up like that. And just like we did over here, you fold this down. This should fit. And then you fold this down and around. Hold on a second, I clearly got something not lined up right because that should be, this shouldn't be in the way here. Did I fold that the wrong way? I don't think I did. No, that, that should be the right way. Yeah, because that fits. There we go. And then plug the, uh, there we go. It's just a matter of getting it, just kind of holding it together until it fits, because this, this foot's a little bit more packed than this foot over here. And like I said, you can have the gun stored in there, but we'll worry about that later. So stand them up, and then you want to rotate it so this hinge is on the inside of the leg. Just grab it right here. It rotates just below this green piece um, right here. So rotate it so those hinges are on the inside of the leg, and then rotate the foot uh, forward at the ankle. And there's his legs done. Now the upper body. Oh, he died. Come up here. So lift this up and forward. We're going to pull his arms out from around the head here. Oh, actually, no. First, we're going to first we're going to get these uh, these panels out and up. And this is again, this is a little difficult because these panels are sitting behind. Here we go. Kind of lift it up, pull that out over this piece. And it just, the way it sits can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. There we go. We get that out and around. Oh, that actually rotates on that. Hmm. Well, that's, I guess that's good to know. I don't know why that that's pinned on and rotates, so it's good to know. Get that out of there and bring those up like that. Then we can pull the arms out because that frees up that hinge. Uh, so rotate the arms up and around. And this is the point right now when you fold these up and around, you want to make sure this arm piece comes all the way up and this green piece, flips, there's a little notch here and you want to make sure this comes up all the way around and over that notch piece. So you may need to support it back here a little bit because it does kind of snap over it. And it, the first couple times you do it, it requires a lot more force than you feel comfortable with on this, um, especially knowing how prone the rest of it is to breakage, but it does pop up over that hinge. I swear to God, it does. There we go. There we go. Just like that. And you can rotate the elbows forward here. Come on. There we go. There we go. Like that. And you lift this whole head assembly up and out and fold these dark gray panels all the way in. And then these, rotate the seat around and fold it down. You can rotate the seat so the seat, the surface of the seat is facing this way and fold this down. And then you wanna fold this in like that. And again, it helps to support it because there's some thin hinges and you don't want to crack it. So support it at the hinge when you're folding these pieces. Fold this, uh, the, the steering wheel in and these pieces kind of fold around there like that. Fold the wheels in. And then this piece right here comes forward. Actually, you want to open this, these panels right here, you want to rotate out and then, um, you kind of have to do them in a certain order because this piece has a tab. So you kind of want to get them mostly lined up and then push them up so they're so they're mostly flat across here like that. And then you can pull this gray piece down and forward and then rotate it back of the hinge right there on the green bumper. And those seat cushions are going to go right between the wheels. The steering wheel is going to kind of come down over them uh, just like that. And then um, as you bring them down, there's a little tab. There's a slot right here on the inside of the wheel, and there's a little tab in the upper body that needs to go in there. So you just kind of have to pull it, just pull it gently around the wheel. Again, always mindful of what hinges you're grabbing and, and all that stuff, but 
You should go right in there. Kind of push in on the wheel. There we go. And lock in both sides of it. Like that. And that locks the whole torso together. This whole window assembly, like the window and the head assembly and the cannon, rotates around like that. And then this sits flat on the back. Fold this panel up. The kind of dashboard. Some really nice detail on the dashboard as well. Around like that. And then this head on this hinge folds down. It kind of floats a little bit, but nothing horrible. Um, and you fold down the, those rear view mirrors. And you can, I guess you can slide that back down, but I think they're supposed to stay up like this. There's just a dual hinge here. Set them up like that. And then this cannon. Should rotate down. Oh yeah, here we go. There's a there's a whole bunch of hinges in this, but you fold this down, and then this little tab tabs into this cl clip right here. Rotate the cannon, fold down this panel, flip up the uh, the, the front of it, fold it down, and kind of into that, and then uh, flip up this rear piece, and then there's a little there is like a little groove there to get this little uh, fin out. And then right here, there's a couple little tiny tabs on his hands that let you uh, right there to kind of get your fingernail under and open up his hands. And there we go. And there is Hound in robot mode. You can hold, uh, there's also like, the, so the, you got the little cage key. You can uh, lift this up and flip out a little hinge here on his waist and you can hang the key from it if you want. So if you want to display him hang, wearing that key, you can. And if you don't, you can throw the key back in the box or in the plastic hood and fold that little hinge back up. Um, if you have the cage that uh, MMC made for their cassette ravage, you can hold that. You can put his hologram gun in his hand. Just open up his fingers here. Wah. Tab it in. And then just close the hand around it. He comes with, like I said, we saw that effect cone, which can plug into it to illustrate that he is shooting a hologram. You can lift it up the top of his head Oh, this is, there we go. And he has this little underwater visor. If you kind of get your fingernail under it, you can lift it up and close it down over his face. Do be careful, because again, these these three pins in his helmet are places where people have reported cracking. Um, that's actually just a paint rub. That's not actually a crack there, thankfully. Um, so be careful of that, but you can give him his little underwater visor. It doesn't look great because like the edges, the plastic's thick enough that the edges kind of mess with his face, but it is there and built in if you want to uh, if you want to have him do that. Also, when you've got the helmet open, uh, you saw we had those extra faces earlier, and you can see there's the tab that holds them into place. So if you want to swap out uh, his faces, he's got a kind of a determined face here, kind of a Crispin Glover determined face, and... Uh, an angry face versus this kind of doofy smile. You just pull up on his face that's in there, grab a new one, and uh, plug it right in, close the helmet, and then you can change Hound's facial expression. So there he is with the Crispin Glover face. And here he is with his angry face. He's angry that some, oh no. That hinge is really tight. He's angry that so many of his fellow brethren are breaking. Let's go back to his included face. Wait, which one was this included face? Is this one? And there he is. So his head can can look up a little bit. It can turn a little bit side to side. 
uh, but because of the way this hinge works and the way it kind of sits down on him, uh, you know, doesn't have a whole lot of range, but it's actually kind of looks like Colson in that one. Anyway, <laughs> um, but he's got dual hinged elbow or shoulders, a bicep swivel. He does have dual hinged elbows. Um, he does have a wrist swivel, uh, as well as a, he's got this motion and uh, opening. Again, index finger, and then the other three fingers are one piece, and then the thumb. Uh, he's got a waist swivel. He's got the hip panels, and these little panels open up. He's got a thigh swivel. He's got, um, it's a, it looks like it's a single hinge knee, but it's got a pretty decent range of motion there. Um, he's got ankle tilt, side to side, front to back. Um, so pretty solid in his pose but He does actually have elbow crunch. You saw that those uh, these panels can rotate a little bit. If you, I guess what's the word? Butterfly joint or dual swivel hunch hunch poses? I don't know. But yeah, so uh, I mentioned I, I, the break, the hinge that broke. So I was transforming him, and when I got to this point, this you can see this this hinge just snapped. Uh, right there with with no force like usually sometimes like, you feel like oh man like, this is kind of stuck am I pushing too hard this just I went to open this up so I could close up uh, so I could fold some of this stuff in and it just went whoop. I mean like like didn't even you didn't even hear a crack or a snap or anything I just touched it and it was whoop and you can see um, a little bit on the hinge where like one edge has some rough plastic where it looks like it was probably cracked and this edge is just just sheared just straight and it honestly it looks like there may even be some paint in there it almost even looks like it may have been cracked before they painted it but um but yeah it, it's it sat, sat in here like this and the thing is like this 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 inner piece right here like i can't even get it i've tried i can't even oh there we go now oh no it actually didn't even rotate it just cracked again um like I tried, I couldn't even get that piece to rotate. I feel like even if it wasn't already cracked, like the paint just kind of fused in there because this piece is just is just immovable uh, inside of that hinge. So just something to be aware of. I don't know if I don't know if maybe this was pinched too tight or what, but um, just a little distressing. And, and that was the only part that broke on mine. I've seen people with cracks all through here. Like both of these panels have cracked off. I have seen. Uh, like I said, I've seen cracks all through the like all all through here in the head. Any of these these small hinges where there's a pin um, has been prone to crack, and I don't know what the, I've, I've seen a lot of them. And again, I've I've been reading the transformer boards, so it, it could be that there it's it's a small percentage of the ones that are breaking. Um, but uh, it, it seems to happen like a lot of people seem to be opening these and finding these cracks either right out of the package or during the first transformation like they go to transform them and they crack um and that's not to say that this one which seems to be solid so far isn't is, is going to stay perfect i'm going to do my best to uh treat it very carefully because like a lot of these transformers that have had issues um i haven't had those problems with and and i've been i've been lucky to have that be the case but um I can confirm myself, like, like I said, first transformation, I didn't even get this guy all the way to robot mode the first time, even knowing of the breakages and being careful. I got through the legs, I was super careful on the legs, and and, I, and they went together very easily, and I thought, oh great, that's where a lot of the breakages were, I, I seem to have gotten a good one, and then I got up here, and again, it wasn't being rough, wasn't doing anything wrong, and just this hinge bent it out and was ready to go this hinge went to move it and just right, right, like just, just came off in my hand and uh so i mean it's it's, it's kind of a shame that, that these figures are I, I like the tune accuracy i love the designs but they are having some issues so just be wary of that uh going in um you can also like the instructions also show that you can kind of fold this around and store it behind his head if you want like that which okay um i like having it on his shoulder cannon and the shoulder cannon they also can rotate a little bit and move around and pose so yeah i quite like this hound hound is one of my uh g1 favorites uh both in design and just the character so it's nice to have a cool uh a cool cartoon looking version of him it's a shame that he's so fragile um one of my other ones is Sunstreaker, 
So uh, there he is right there. Uh, they, so th those are two of my favorite Autobot cars uh, from G1, and they've both gotten the uh, updated uh, cartoon-esque design masterpieces, so I'm super happy about that. I have gotten um, quick channel uh, things. Everybody's out wondering about what's going on with Papa, and some of my videos don't have comments, and some of them do, and that's because some of them are marked for kids. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to do this going forward. Some people have just... So I know some other reviewers have just not marked their stuff as marked for as for kids, and uh, and there seems to be like with some of the clarification, maybe it's not the end of the world because I'm clearly not aiming any of my stuff at kids. The way I'm doing it right now, just to be safe, is that if you can walk into a Target or a Walmart and grab one of these things off the shelf, uh, like the Cyberverse stuff, like I'm marking it for kids. Kids can buy these. Kids uh, are are likely to have some of these uh, figures, even even the old, uh, you know, even even stuff like Siege, which is technically marketed collectors. It's still something you can walk on a normal day into Target or Walmart and pick up off the shelf. So I'll be marking those for kids at least until we have a better idea of how this is going to work. It may cost me some revenue. Um, I'm sorry you can't comment on all the videos, but like, it just seems the safer way until we have a really good idea of how that's going to of how this is all going to work. Maybe it'll go back to being comments all the time. Maybe it won't. On videos like this, on masterpiece figures, on, on foreign uh, figures, like import figures from Japan, um, adult collector lines, uh, third-party figures, all the things like that, um, that a child is not going to be able to walk into Target or Walmart and pick up off the shelf, that you're going to have to order online from a specialty store, from overseas, or from, you know, specialty retailers will continue to be marked as not for kids, uh, even though like the content is not blasting, you know, there's, I'm not going to start swearing to make them, my videos uh, differentiated from, from kids content. But like th th these types of videos will be marked for as, as not for kids and should still have comments and everything. And as as we see how this, and I think that's a fair trade off, just to be safe until we know exactly what's going on with this. But um, but you're not going to see a doom and gloom Coppa channel video from me. The worst case scenario is I won't get to buy as many toys, but I'm not. I never focused on making this into like a giant brand. I'm not living off of YouTube, so um, so it, it's not impacting me as much. You might see fewer videos from me. I'm trying to work on some ways to make that not be the case, but um, but yeah, but that, that's the plan going forward. Maybe this will all be overblown and it won't be such a big deal, and and all the videos will go back to being uh, free and open for commenting and, and everything. But we'll see how it goes. Anyway. Didn't mean to turn that into into the COPPA time, but that's just, uh, I've had a lot of people asking questions and I figured out, uh, well, well, I'm not going to do a whole save my channel, the world is ending COPPA video. That, that's where I'm at. That's the way I'm looking at it. Maybe that will change depending on how things go, but that's where I'm at for the time being. When I have had comments located, though, I have had some complaints about I am not uh, apparently providing the quality of comparisons with my figures that I should be so um, I thought I'd I, I thought I was going to step it up here with Hound so a uh, Hound is a green um, a green military jeep so here he is with uh, a Mythic Legion's uh, little goblin dude who is green you can see he's got the green skin there um, so you can see how that works with a Mythic Legion's line of figures uh, here he is uh, with a little Japanese moss ball that I got from a co-worker uh, for Christmas and uh, has been living here on the kitchen table. So, uh, so yeah, there he is with a Marimo or a Marimo, however you say it, a little Japanese moss ball that I'm taking care of and enjoying. Um, here he is with, uh, if you want to get into Transformer stuff, here he is with McAdam's forearm, uh, the build a figure from Cyberverse, so you can see about how big uh, those forearms are going to be in relation to each other. Um, and here he is with this cool little Play-Doh keychain that I found at Kroger the other day. Um, it's got a shark cookie cutter type thing and then some Play-Doh to use with the shark cookie cutter. And I like sharks and I just thought it was cool. So they had some cooler Play-Doh colors, but I didn't need a unicorn or a mermaid. Um, they, I did also get... Um, here he is with uh, some, some kind of pinkish orange Play-Doh with a cool little dragon thing. So if... Um, that's about, you can see there's a dragon and a shark a cookie cutter in comparison with Masterpiece Hound. Now, I'm just, I'm just being goofy. Um, here he is, like I said, we already saw him with Sunstreaker here. Um, here he is with the recent uh, Bumblebee. Uh, just to give you, like, again, a lot of yellow in that picture, but uh, 
But yeah, there he is with some of his fellow Autobots. And of course, um, here he is with the new MP44 uh, Optimus Prime, who's probably, yep, he is just a little bit too big for the frame. But uh, well, there you go, just to give you an idea of how they look. Here he is with his busted old uh, original copy that get, showed up side by side. Oh, look at that. Cool, cool little, cool little LED effect over here. Anyway, so yeah, there is MP47 Masterpiece Hound. Um, again, a little bit of a crapshoot on whether you'll get one that isn't busted right out of the package uh, or won't just explode himself in the first uh, couple of transformations. Some of it can probably be avoided by being careful, but I feel like if you've got a copy that's destined to break, it is, in fact, destined to break and will probably, uh, even with a modicum of care, is going to uh, eventually suffer for it. But, um, like I said, I've had two. One had some issues with no force whatsoever. This one has held up to several transformations uh, as I practiced it and seems to be okay, but uh, who knows what the future brings. Like I said, very neat design. I like Hound. Um, it's a neat looking robot. Um, it is a little bit of a risk. I don't know if I want to get all Jim Cramer on it, but um, like, it's a risky buy or don't buy. Uh, but, you know, it's up to you. I, I was talking to a friend of mine about like who's considering selling theirs uh, before they even open it just to avoid the risk. And I'm like, it's kind of, and I refer to it as kind of like, it's like a Black Zarek situation where you've kind of got Schrodinger's garbage. Uh, in a box because you don't know if it's busted or not until you open it and, and there's a lot of sealed black xerix that you're like people spend a lot of money on and then don't open so you're just kind of sitting there like it's a collector's item it's sealed it has value but it could just be a mess in there <laughs> so uh you know that that that's the risk you're taking i think if you get a good looking if you get a hound in good condition it's a fun figure. You, regardless of how solid it is, you do need to be careful with it because even if copy that isn't destined to break uh, will break very easily if you force some of those connections. So um, it's up to you. Anyway, looking at the time, I see we're coming up on about 38 minutes here on this video review, which is a little longer than I'd intended to, but there is some stuff that I absolutely needed to talk about. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, but yeah, th thanks for watching. There's Masterpiece Hound.